is Sunday, February 24th. Uh, my name is Veronica. Welcome to my floss tube. I believe this is my eighth video. Um, thank you for joining me if you're new. Thank you for coming back if you're returning. And so I'm going to talk to you about my cross stitch. This is my, my uh, cross stitch channel. Um, I've got a couple of whips to show you, a couple of projects that I've worked on, and uh, one big finish. You probably guess what that is if you've seen any of my other videos. Um, so, and I have a bit of a cold. So normally I, I, I've been filming these on Saturdays. Today is Sunday because I slept in yesterday. So apologize for the congestion. I'll, I'll try to edit out any like sneezes or if I have to blow my nose or anything like that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, projects that I've worked on. So I have, I have two to show you things I've shown you in the past. Um, so this is, apologize, I have to get stuff out, take this out of the plastic bag so it doesn't glare. So this is the um, 2017 Tiny Modernist um, Mystery Sal. It's not a mystery anymore, there's the full thing. <laughs> but, uh, so I worked a little bit on that. And I will show you an, uh, image from the last video I had where, where I was with this. And here's where I am today. So as you can see, I did that little tree there in the lower left corner. That's all. <laughs> Not much, but it's a just a little thing that whenever I get some time, I spend a little bit of time on. So next thing I worked on again I don't have much here but is oops this one might have glare because I'm not going to take it out of the sheet protector but this is uh, a pattern I bought on Etsy by uh, Choco Coco Stitch called Super Mario see, let's zoom in a little bit Got a very pixelated look oh yeah sorry the tiny modernist stitch along was on a 28 count cashel Tarnish, I picture this plus tarnish linen. Um, this, Super Mario, I'll show, insert a picture here of where I was last time. The camera. So as you can see, I did the cloud in the upper right corner. Still working on Mario too, and his other little things that are gonna be around him. This is on, I still have it from, from one, two, three stitch, 14 count touch of blue Ada. I wanted it to be like big and pixelated so that's why I chose the 14 count. I experimented in the beginning with trying like different um, numbers of strands of DMC floss with this one and I kept going back to two strands. A lot of people like to do three for the coverage. Two is easier because you can loop start. So I weighed the pros and cons of that. So that's all I have for whips. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or, or are a member of the Mirror Mirror on the Wall Facebook group, you may have noticed that I finished Portrait of Veronica. So I'm super thrilled with that. I don't have her here with me because she's at the Framers. So um, I, um, I took her to Just Stitching in Strongsville, Ohio to, to have her framed. And I, I expected to be like paying a little bit more. I've never taken anything to get framed at an LNS before and I was like oh well this is really like a big project and I'm willing to spend a little bit more and it was actually cheaper than I thought way cheaper than than I probably would have paid had I taken her to Joanne's so I'm sold <laughs> I'm always going to go there now to have my needlework framed plus they're specialized in framing needlework so um, if you've been hesitant to try getting things framed at your LNS give that a try well I don't know if you have but um, so I have, since I don't have her here with me, I created a little video. I finished her on Wednesday, February 20th, ahead of my goal. I wanted to finish her by my birthday, by, which is March 4th. So I'm super thrilled about that. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'm going to insert a video here that I took on Wednesday. Everybody. Today is Wednesday, February 20th, and I just put the last bead on Veronica. 
this morning. It's about uh, 6 30. Um, so anyway, I wanted to do a little short video to show you in more detail. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm holding it, but she's here on the floor in my basement and I will probably be getting her framed very soon. Um, I started her last May for Stitch Mania and I have been focusing on her since about Thanksgiving-ish, maybe a little bit before that, maybe October. Um, so it I'm, I'm happy I finished her before my birthday, a little about a week and a half before my birthday, so so I'm really, really excited about that. So anyway, I'll, um, I'll zoom in just a little bit. I stitched her on uh, 32 count star sapphire linen from Witch Elt, and I did her two over two in all of the called for colors and all of the called for beads. I did make one modification around her hand here. And I also stitched her skin two over, or sorry, one over one using full crosses. So um, I learned a few things from this um, looking at her hand. Um, if you look at the pattern, which I don't have with me now, oh, sorry, but her ring finger is kind of pointing out. And I tried to hold my hand like that. It was very uncomfortable. I didn't think that was like a very natural pose. So I thought maybe she could be hold, grasping her necklace with all four of her fingers. And I just altered it a little tiny bit to do that. Um, and so here's the, the skin. I really like the way the one over one skin looks, but what I learned from it is I think it, it took forever, um, four, four times the number of stitches. So next time I'm going to try the two over one half stitch. And I know a lot of other stitchers like to use the, uh, uh, silks for that, like the rainbow gallery splendor. So I might try that in my next mirror. I'm going to leave her as is though. I'm not, definitely not going to Rip her, out, rip her skin out or anything like that to uh, re-stitch it because I think that would just be overkill right now. But I really love the way that the, the beads turned out too. So as you can see, her hair is all beaded. She's got this like this like kind of uh, headdress jewelry thing going on here, which is real pretty. And it's nice the way it all came together. Her earring has lots of little tiny black beads in them. And then she's got these larger beads throughout her necklace sprinkled in with smaller beads which I think is just gorgeous. It, so I know, I, I think I mentioned in one of my last videos that I wasn't thrilled with, or I was kind of worried about the fact that she's um, on 32 count and the way the beads will lay. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of beads all bunched up together here and then down in the white part of her dress, which I'll zoom in now, like here. Um, I actually don't mind the way it looks and it looks a little natural. I did remove some beads in places where it wouldn't fit and some of these these like uh, light green beads here are a bit bigger than most of the other beads, except for the giant ones up here. Um, and so in those places it wouldn't all fit, but it kind of looks nice all jumbled together. And then down here in the white part of her dress is the, the one crinic. It's like that metal-y color. It's kind of hard to tell with the light right now. I don't know if you're seeing the sparkle um, of the crinic mixed with the beads too. The beads are also quite sparkly. Um, but yeah, there's there's the one Krynik. It's uh, 011HL High Luster, number four. And then actually there's the, the DMC metallic that's here in the in the sofa. Um, I didn't use the called for DMC on this one, actually. I had something in my stash, which was, um, uh, it, it was terrible to work with. I don't know exactly what it was. It was a DMC. It came on a skein, though. What's called for comes on a spool now. It could be the same thing. I'm not sure. Uh, I think next time I'm going to try to substitute it for something even Krynik was, was easier to work with, so I'm not sure. Um, we'll move back over here to the back of her dress. So the beads I attached using um, some some beading needles and a, a thread, a silky clear thread, invisible thread, and that was extremely difficult to work with as well. I, I'm going to look for something like the um, Wonder or something like that, that the YLI, I don't know how to pronounce that, Ely Wonder thread next time, because this was super thin. It got really kinky after being used for a little bit. It was meant, it's meant to be a sewing thread. And it, it was somewhere between the uh, DMC and the Krynik in difficulty to work with. So, um, Krynik is actually easy, um, compared to the other things that, I mean, obviously DMC is the easiest here. Um, but... Yeah, I just love the way in her dress, the way that um, the artist Nora Corbett did the lighting 
and made it look like satin in the back here um, with like a, a beautiful lacy print and then the front. I like the way that she kind of did the, the flow, almost like the movement and the shadowing. Um, but yeah, my first ever Mirabilia. I'm so excited. I'm going to start another one right away. Okay, well, I'll join you back in my regular video now, so thank you. Yeah, so I'm excited um, about finishing her, and um, I have made, I made a couple of purchases, too, that I'm going to show you, and then I'll get more into my birthday plans and stuff like that. So, not nothing too, too big, but also my LNS I purchased this little um, Mill Hill kit. Another another ornament, just a, um, something that I can use as like these things are nice. The the stitching parts are nice for travel, but this one just like has a ton of beads on it. It's got they all have like charms too, some of them. But I don't know. I just thought this one was really pretty, and I'm sure I'll I'll get a chance to do this either like spare time or whatever. It comes with it comes with everything you need. These little mill hill kits are great, by the way. You stitch them on perforated paper. They're super easy. Um, it's a good way to like learn how to bead if you don't know much about beading. It's, that's what I did anyway. It's also, um, they, they're usually, um, it's about a 14 count perforated paper. And so they have you do three strands um, and you can't loop start them, but that's okay. So anyway, I thought that was cute. And I also purchased um, Karen Water Lily's Lemon and Lime. Um, they happen to have it. It's, it's for one of the things that I'm going to show you potentially a new start. So... That's all. Um, so my birthday is March 4th, eight days from now. I'm going to be turning uh, 40. So since it's a big birthday, I set some goals for myself. I wanted to finish Portrait of Veronica, which I did. Yay. Um, I also wanted to lose some weight, and I started Weight Watchers back in October. And I didn't, I'm probably not going to meet this goal. I, I wanted to lose about 35 pounds before my birthday and then keep losing. Um, I'm down 29 and a half, so it's pretty close. And so I'm gonna keep going with the, and now they call it WW. And I've been really happy with it. I've, this is like the third or fourth time I've done Weight Watchers. But uh, if you look at some of my older Floss Tube videos, I might look a little different. I don't know, it's probably about, I started Floss Tube in November, I think. So that was maybe 15 to 20 pounds ago. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I have to look back and watch myself now that I'm curious. Um, let's see. What else? So um, for my birthday, since my birthday is on the 4th and I'm turning 40, I want to start four new things. Since I finished Veronica, I so I, I told you guys in one of my prior videos that I did Mania once and I didn't like it. Um, I am going to try to, to, to think a little bit more carefully about what I'm starting and also... Um, spend more time in the rest of the month on those things. I think the thing I didn't like about mania is you like just one day and I, since I work full time, I only get like sometimes 15 minutes to stitch. So maybe I'd put one strand in of a floss and then I, it just looks like this little blob and then I have to put it aside and I can't even see anything on it. Um, I still have some things that I started for mania that I've never stitched more than <laughs> another day on. And so I don't know if I'll ever get back to them. So I'm going to plan to do more with them. But on March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, I do plan to start four new things. And then the rest of March, I'll be stitching on them too. Um, so I'm not sure yet what I'm going to start. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've fully kitted. And some, there's one or two that I've decided for sure I'm going to start. But, you know, if you have any feedback for things you would like to see me start, please put comment below because I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, the one that I am for sure going to start, this is one I've been kidding for a while. I've been talking about it in my videos and it's another Mira. It's um, Stargazer. It's a very popular one, um, but I just love her. I'm going to be doing her in all of the call for colors except the fabric. I will be doing a um, 32 count Belfast picture this plus in Mystic, which is kind of this like, it's like dark blue sky, night night sky color, which I really like. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I do, I'm going to start her on March 1st. Um, I'm taking that day off work. That's a Friday. I'm taking it off of work just so I can start her and get some cleaning done and have fun. It's my, you know, before my birthday. So 
the others that I'm not sure about, I'm going to pick three more from these. Let's see. In no particular order whatsoever. All right. So I have um, this book I was lucky enough to get a while back when it was still in print. You can still buy it on eBay. It's just you pay more for it now. Um, Best of Teresa Wensler Fantasy Collection. And I want to start this one right here, The Castle. Um, it I, I don't have the fabric for it yet. Um, I ordered um, a 32 count, um, shoot, what is it? I think it's called Mercedes. It's kind of like a stormy gray clouds. I ordered it in Lugana though. Um, so it's kind of lighter because I think you need this, the background to be a bit lighter, but it's supposed to be both the sky and the water because you don't stitch these portions. And um, so I, I'm, I'll probably get this way before my birthday. And this is like, probably this is my second choice. But anyway, I, um, I love this, this book. I probably want to stitch like everything in it. Um, and if you get a chance to to get it, it's pretty good. The only thing is it's a book, so it's hard to like, you know, when you get like the pattern in the corner, the creases, it's um, it's hard to see the uh, the symbols. And I usually make a working copy so I can mark it up. And it's really hard. I have a, um, a, a flatbed scanner photocopier thing, and it's really hard to kind of press it down. <laughs> I feel like I'm damaging the book. There's another one in here that I did start. I haven't shown you guys yet. I'll show you. I'm debating whether to UFO it, sadly. Um, here, let me, let me find it so I can show you. It's, um, it's this one, Day, which is a beautiful pattern. There's a there's a companion piece to this called Night, which I'll show you too, Night. But yeah, so let me show you how far I got with Day, and I'll explain why I may stop. I don't know, this will make my mom pretty sad because she loves this, but... So I'm stitching this one on a 28 count um, Cashel raw opalescent linen. I don't know if you can see the sparklies. Or I was stitching this. And sorry about all the park threads here. The reason I want to UFO it, you see I got maybe an eighth of the way done. I did the cloud um, in the upper left corner. I was working through the border. The border is intense. That's Teresa Wensler. Loads of, of quarter stitches and Lots of back stitches and um, very confetti heavy. And um, I mean, this is not a variegated, you see the background in here, how it gets lighter in this area and darker in these areas. That's not variegated. That's probably about like 10 different shades of, of that tan color here. But, and I was practicing with marking pen. I'm going to have to wash that out. <laughs> um, it is, it is designed to be washed out. It's the, like the, with that blue, um, fabric pen or whatever. But anyway, um, the reason I've decided to, to UFO her is because this is my first experience. This is my first experiment with Krynik and I used the wrong kind. I used, she calls for blending fil filament. I use number eight and I'm mixing it with two other DMC flosses. So I'm going to try to rip those parts out. It looks I'm not going to zoom in on how bad it looks, but it looks kind of bad. And I was wondering, why is this so thick? But I kept going with it anyway. And I'm, I'm worried that it's going to damage the linen. I do have another piece of this linen, so I may restart her. But the reason I bought this book is for this pattern here. And I decided, I was like, oh, I'll start with an easier one. No, I'm just going to do the one I really want to do. So that is, that is my second potential new start for my birthday. My third... Just keep going here. So I've, these are things that I have, like I said, fully kitted. I purchased everything. You know, I I want to do them at some point in my life. And I, you know, the more I, the more whips I have, the slower I'm going to finish things. I I get that. But I w what I'm going to try to do is focus more on things. Um, and also have other stuff that I work on. Try to plan it a little bit better. Second thing, this is a Hade. I haven't started this one. Um, the Accolade by. Um, the, the artist is Edmund Layton, um, but charted by uh, Heaven and Earth Designs. And I have a 28 count Jobelin that I was going to try to stitch that on. And it's all DMC, and there is a Krynik in that one as well. 32. So I like that one. That'll take a long time, of course, because it's Hayden. <laughs> next one, next fully painted thing that I have that I'd like to start. 
is Anamira Andromeda. And the fabric that I have for that is, uh, I believe this is, oh, it's called Bridget by, I think it's Fabrics by Stephanie. Fuzz on it, but it's got a couple different colors in it. So I bumped the table, my phone fell down. <laughs> so anyway, I want to stitch Andromeda on this. I think it's Fabrics by Stephanie. I think it's, it's called Bridget. Um, and this is, and she's a smaller one too. This is a pretty small piece of fabric. Um, and I think this is, yeah, this is 32 count Bridget. So I have to stop bumping the table. And I, where did I put my Andromeda? Well, I'll find her later. Anyway, the next one, there it is. The next one that I want to start, <laughs> this one. I have everything to start this and I guess I jumped on the bandwagon. Wait, give the flag. I'm so, I purchased this on eBay. This is an original, not one of the re-releases. Um, it's used and it's got like a little uh, dent in the picture somewhere. And I don't know, I feel like I got a, I mean, the most, most I've ever paid for a pattern, but I feel like I got a decent deal on it. I have, um, I have all the, the beads and everything for the fabric. I purchased the We The People fabric. I, I'm not gonna take it out of the bag, but you guys have probably seen this by uh, Fabric Flare. So um, I'm excited about that one. That'll be a nice, nice fun one to do around like 4th of July, patriotic times and stuff. Um, oh, so um, the, the fabric that I ordered for the castle, uh, I bought a fat half, which is way bigger than I need because I also want to use it for this Raven Queen. I've got all of the, um, the, the Krynix and the it has some uh, Karen Water Lilies too. Another Mirabilia. So it's another one that'll look good in like a like a gray clouds background color. It's also a 32 count. So I'm gonna start. Let's see, I'm gonna start a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the last too. So I can't have both, can you? So I got a couple of small things, small-ish things too. This one is. I purchased this last year when I was doing the North Coast Tour to Stitch. Um, this is by, this is called Steampunk Dragonfly by Sam Sarah. And it's got almost all fancy floss that it calls float for and a couple of buttons on there. Um, it has some companion pieces that I also want to do. There's like a, a sea bass and I don't know, I just think they're so cute. I like steampunk things. I think they're really cool. So um, I bought this at... Um, I think Cross My Heart in Columbus. And I just bought some some flax linen for that. I think they too fancy 32 count flax linen. And I bought some of the fancy flosses, so some of the uh the weak style works colors that it calls for. The ones that were more variegated I bought. The as this is not not cheap to, to buy all those. And the rest I'll just use DMC. Um next small things. I want to do. I also bought these at um, the North Coast Tour to Stitch last year. I don't remember the store and I apologize, um, but I bought a bunch of these. Um, Sue Hillis, these are tiny compared to some of the other things on my list. The, they're post stitches, they're um, like these little pirate sayings. So I've got three of them. Um, this one is why I work when you can pillage and plunder. Things you could put up at work, you know, kind of fun, fun things. This one is another day, another ship. <laughs> or our another day. They all come with this little charm, too. This one is this one. And then the last one, which my husband wants, and I'll probably make this twice because I love it. It's so funny. The beatings will continue when morale improves. <laughs> and for those, I, I, this isn't going to be big enough for all of them, but I tea dyed some, um, some Charles Craft Ada, some 14 count Ada, because they're made to go in a uh, 5 by 7 frame if you use 28 or 14 count. And this started off as, I'm really impressed, this is my first tea dyeing experiment. I used the Priscilla and Chelsea method. Um, I didn't have any coffee, so I just used tea. But I'll open it up and show you. But it started off as an antique white Ada. And, and it looks kind of pirate aged, right? A little bit. I don't know. 
else. I could probably fit two of them on that because they don't give you much of the Charles Craft data, but it's smaller than like a fat quarter, I think. Or maybe it's approximately a fat quarter. I don't know. But yeah, I'll fix that later. Okay, and the next small-ish thing I want to do is from Mr. X Stitch Guide to Cross Stitch. I've got some right here. It's, I have to find it one sec. Some fun things in here. There's a good picture of it. Mona Lisa. <laughs> it's on the cover too, but you can see a fraction of it. Um, very pixelated Mona Lisa, so it's actually very tiny. And I want to do this on an 18 count ADA, so it'll be like, you know, two and a half by three and a half inches teeny tiny, but I want to use it to sort of practice full coverage, so I'm leaning towards doing this one as one of them before I pick up the Accolade or my other paid that I've started, the uh, the Mediterranean Harbor. So, anyway, I want to practice the, the blitz stitch diagonal method. <laughs> um, next is another one that I purchased on the North Coast Tour to Stitch. Another reason, too, I want to start a lot of these is because I, I want to do the North Coast Tour to Stitch again this year, 2019. It's in October, but I want to make sure that I'm buying stuff and not just letting it sit around. Um, this one is called Hooligan's Hangout by Glendon Place. Cute little Halloween scene there. Hooligan is the owl. And we called for fabric has the ghosts printed on it. So if you don't use that, you don't get the ghosts. But I purchased it. It was kind of hard to find, actually, because I think this might be an older uh, design. It says... 2013 on it, copyright 2013. So, um, but yeah, I did purchase that 16 count Ada, much little ghosts on it. <laughs> and this is what the lemon and lime is for, is for the, the moon. See, it's got like greens and yellows in it. <clears throat> so, the next few that I have that I'm considering starting are all kits. Um, couple of them are big. <laughs> so this one is um, Dimensions Gold European Bistro. Pretty little scene there. Sorry about the glare. Oh my gosh. You can see yourself on it. Or there. There we go. Um, again, I, I like the Dimensions stuff there. Um, my first video I showed of Dimensions Gold Tiger and um, I did a couple of other Dimensions ones in the past when I was younger and they they do a really good job with like backstitch and they tell you, you know how many you know certain times you're doing like five strands you know uh, um half stitch or the backgrounds tend to be half stitch the um foregrounds tend to be the full cross stitches and certain numbers of strands and, and they do a lot with that i mean i guess that's why it's called dimensions but it um they do a really nice job with it and and the designs are for cross stitch which is really good not like everything else isn't but you know and the other one, I, I showed this already with with the haul, but Rocky Point. And I purchased these at Hobby Lobby when they went on clearance last year. There was some, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into my political viewpoints here. This was my one and only ever purchase from Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure if I'll ever purchase anything else from them again. My husband gave me a hard time about it, but... Um, see, I spent like $6 on this Riolis um, Eagle. Isn't that beautiful? $6. This is all the, the wool and everything. I haven't opened it yet. Um, but yeah, I just think that's really pretty. I've never done Riolis before. And the other one that I purchased for $3.80. Isn't that cool? The rose. Very pretty design. I'm not a flowery person, but I don't know, I just think that's very pretty and artistic and something that would look nice, like hung up somewhere and framed. Um, so that's it for the things I want to start. <laughs> I have a uh, one of those little um, decision roulette wheels on my phone, so I've got two of those wheels, one for my whips and one for my new starts. I might use it to help me decide, other than Stargazer, what, what to start. Um, I plan to start one on the first, one on the second, one on the third, one on the fourth. And then, again, comment below if you have any suggestions or anything that you'd like to see me working on. I have another one for all of my whips then. So after March is over. So for March, then the four weeks in March, I'm going to continue on those four that I started. At the end of March, um, I'm going to join Ms. Oso Crafty in her birthday stitch along. 
Um, and I'll link her video so you can see the details of that. But that starts I think, March 29th and it goes until her birthday, which is April 4th, exactly one month after mine. Um, I'll link her video where she goes into the details of what that is. Um, and I'll probably um, film more around them when I decide what I'm going to use to, to, um, to do that. And then at, in April, I will probably be using doing something like um, what I was thinking of is a weekly rotation and having the first week of the month always be my focus piece, which is probably going to be Stargazer unless I change my mind. Um, and then the rest of the weeks, I'll probably use my decision roulette wheel to spin for my whips. Um, in the past, I've been, you've probably noticed, I've just been stitching on what I want when I want to stitch on it. So I was hyper-focused on Veronica wanting to finish her, and that um, caused me to stitch on nothing else. <laughs> now, doing this one week out of every month, I'm probably not going to finish Stargazer this year. I might. Maybe maybe the, the decision roulette wheel will land on her a couple times, or maybe, you know, I'll just get hyper-focused again and decide to stop my plans. But I don't think, <clears throat> with my work schedule and everything, that and having kids that I'm going to um, be able to to finish her this year, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that's sort of my my future plans. Um, after this video, I'm probably gonna um, end with a, a photo montage of my progress on Veronica, um, a la Blitz Stitch. How he does that every single time on his videos. It's really cool. So I kind of want to see it for myself. So I want to put it together and I'll share it with you guys. I didn't take too many pictures of her until she had a face. So so start. it's going to start off with like her having skin and a face and stuff like that. But and I didn't start floss tube until um, like her torso area was mostly done and I was working on her dress then. So um, I've got a few photos early on, but not very many. But then I've got a lot more photos as we go, especially when I got near the end and, and the beads and stuff. And you guys all saw that little clip if you watched through this whole video of my finish of her. So I'm going to try that. We'll see how that goes. I might not. So if you don't see it, maybe I'll even edit this stuff out. We'll see. <laughs> and then finally, um, I just want to show you my shirt. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, <laughs> I've had this shirt for a while now. My, my boys, I have two boys, six and eight, went through in my little pony face. And <laughs> we were at the... the um, this is an older shirt. I bought it last year in the summer, I think. Um, we were at like Party City or something, planning one of their birthdays. And um, in, the, in the t shirt section, the adult t shirts were like all on clearance. So I spent like five bucks on this shirt. I was like, oh, the kids were excited. Now they probably don't care anymore because they're into other things like their video games, Mario, stuff like that. So they like my Mario whip. But I've been crocheting a little bit in the past. I haven't picked up crochet in like over a year now, but I made a, I'm starting to make a, a Bowser uh, Amigurumi and they keep asking me, when are you going to work on that? <laughs> but I'm so into cross stitch right now that I don't want to. And so they don't like to hear that, but they do like to see me working on that Mario cross stitch. So that'll be fun. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to end now. This is probably my longest video ever. <laughs> Most of my videos are like 10 minutes or less, but I'm going to end now. So thank you so much for watching. Um, always think critically. And if I can do that photo montage, here it is. I'll see you next time. Bye.